Hey, this is Allen Robinson, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're happy. <laughs> Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you Tuesday, November 17th. It's my father's birthday today. Oh, well, happy Happy birthday. birthday. Papa's kids. Papa's kids. That's right. <laughs> I hope you're playing pickleball wherever you are. Father, I know you are. <laughs> I know you're playing pickleball wherever you're at. It's kind of what you do. Yeah, it's what you do now. <laughs> He's at I the age wait. where pickleball is the full-time job. Yes. What do you do? I play pickleball in the mornings. I take a break. I play a little pickleball <laughs> in the afternoon. Really... And then I eat a dinner around 4 p.m. And then I play pickleball for my evening. Yeah, yeah. But that d- is... the dinner is pickles, of course. Yeah. Well, Welcome into the show. Mike is joining us remotely today. What up, everybody? Contact tracing, yo. <laughs> We were like, uh, Shout out. look, we want you here, yeah. but not here. You know what I mean? Yeah, we want got, you here. Got the fun phone call, so we're taking it safe. Yeah. And I will be here. Uh, which means that uh, next week, Jason will find some form of exposure, <laughs> and he will be That's at right. home. It's uh, I, I got my finger to the nose first, and so I was yeah. uh, I was out. You, by, <laughs> by being out, I mean I've been here. All right. Well, uh, yeah. So we've got a show today. We've got a waiver show today. We're going to talk about some of the big pickups for the week. I think there are some interesting names to discuss. And uh, you're at the point in the season where, I, at least for me in the leagues that I'm in, it is it is laser focus on the week ahead. And and it, everything else, I, I, I'm not even paying that much attention to. If you If you're in a competitive league where you're fighting for a playoff spot, it's this week, win this week, worry about next week and figure it out. Obviously, mm-hmm. if you have a nice record, if you know you're in the playoffs, you're looking more towards some playoff schedules. You guys did the primer last week, and uh, you're paying attention to all of those things, streaming defenses that you want on your roster for down the line, things like that. But right now, in a lot of leagues, you're paying attention to winning this week. And uh, so hopefully we can help you with the waivers today. We've got the streaming quarterbacks as well. A reminder, we have a giveaway. Brooks, that's still up, right? FootClanGiveaway.com? Yes, sir. About 12 days left. Okay. About or exactly? Exactly. That was a very specific (laughs) number to be about. It may be 12 and some extra hours. Okay. I was going to say about 12, 12 days, three hours, four minutes. Uh, Uh. FootClanGiveaway.com. Sign Kenny Galladay jersey if you want to get in on that uh, smooth giveaway. And then uh, YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. If you want to subscribe, click the bell. You'll get access to all the shows over there and then anything extra we throw up on YouTube. TheFantasyFootballers.com is the website. We've got some team profiles. Mike, do you want to talk about those for a second? I know that they're kind of your baby. Yeah, I'm super excited to get these things up. Uh, You know, we're always trying to figure out there's so much data out there. How, uh, How do you look at it how do you organize it so we are uh grabbing things you know if if what you're used to on the player profile like the usage tab well we're going to break that down for teams and be you'll be able to filter so you know through the weeks whatever three through now the san francisco 49ers what wide receiver is receiving which percentage of the targets uh, spot trends as they are happening get in front uh, get out in front of your competition because uh, it, like, look at running backs, you know, timeshares, who is who is rising to the top of a timeshare and some other stuff with game lines and, and things will be in there. They're going to be really, really cool and really functional. Yeah. So we, we had the player profiles come out on the website earlier this year, and now we've got the team profiles and that'll all be integrated very soon. And you'll get to, uh, it's like a quick glance too at a team and see how they're, uh, they're trending. So uh, reactions to last night's football game is that it's hard to watch the Bears play football. It's hard to watch any game in which they are a part of it. That is true because their defense is so good and their offense is so bad. And that's just a hard thing to watch because you don't get 
offense in Bears games. You just don't get to watch anything fun. Now, if you're, I would say, over 60, <laughs> and you remember them good old days <laughs> when the, the defense wins championships. You um, remember the mud bowl? Yeah. Oh. Maybe then. That was you, nothing like the ice bowl. Re you really enjoyed that game. <laughs> Those some, some hard hits. But uh, otherwise, I would say that the Bears are easily the most unwatchable team. Like, you'd think, oh, it's got to be the Jets. No, people put up a ton of points on the Jets. They're right. fun to watch, at least half of it. Not the Jets side, but no, the Bears. No, I agree. And now you didn't. I mean, you thought that it was bad with David Montgomery. Yeah. Now what do you think about the what offense? What a star he is. <laughs> I love the announcers talking about that too. Like, oh, he's just such a fundamental piece of this moving offense. And what are they going to do without him? The answer is nothing. The answer is absolutely nothing. They will do nothing. He, Nick Foles passed for 106 yards. Uh, so wow. disappointing. And then on the other side, you know, Dalvin cook is Dalvin cook. You, you always get production from him. Justin Jefferson quickly ascending to the top of my favorite player list in the NFL. Loved him coming in. Love him even more than now, now that he's dropping a hundred yard games, um, uh, you know, every other on week. The ridge. Yeah. It, it's incredible. Yeah. He is such a gamer. He's a great route runner. He's got speed. He's got everything. So, um, an ascendant talent there and Adam Thielen coming up with two touchdowns. Uh, to save his fantasy day. Otherwise, I don't want to linger here. Yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> well, the, we, the news we, we Nick fin Foles was carted off the field during the last minute of the game, that that matters, but they've got their bye week, um, and I think they're hopeful that he'll actually be okay coming back. Oh, and we did. And yeah, we, we do have one more. What can stop, we found out what can stop Dalvin Cook. It's a, it's a B to the Bs. Oh, you're talking about the uh, the unfortunate. Didn't get the wind knocked out of him, but the ball was a little no. lower when he well, landed the, on the, it. The wind, the wind probably came out. Everything came out. Yeah, he was uh, yeah. he was in a bit of pain. <laughs> we we're talking about that before the show. Um, you know, that's not that's not good. But he he's okay. No. I'd rather him be. I mean, he might not, but I'd rather him be writhing in pain from that <laughs> than than a knee injury. So, and we yeah. also had Jimmy Goose. Ugh. So uh, just when you thought maybe. You could play him. Um, he reminded you he's one of the not Travis Kelsey tight ends. Yeah, the Bears scored 13 points, and they had a 104-yard kick return for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, which uh, I he's incredible at that. Corduroy Patterson. Cor yes. He's yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Uh, I, I'm going to just reveal the secrets here because I'm looking at Mike, I'm looking at Mike right now and, uh, uh we, we have some technology set up to remote in, you know, we knew that this season was going to be a little bit weird. And, uh, so Mike is remoting in and one of the idiosyncrasies of, of being in the remote format is that all of our shows, audio drops are at a, a like a volume level that is, um, dangerous <laughs> it's it's a punishment it, it is a punishment somehow it it blasts the eardrums i forgot that that one was coming so i i took that one at 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. all right uh news and notes to get into the giants a uh, player tested positive for COVID on monday night self-isolating contract tracing this is becoming rather routine two or three teams four teams a week they seem to go to the ultra protocols and manage to get most players on the field. For instance, the Browns last week went uh, into those protocols. They are reopening their facility now. And uh, Andy Janovich, their fullback, is on the on the COVID list, but they're able to get back to practice. This was big news. Drew Brees, multiple rib fractures on both sides of his chest. Five. five. They said five broken, or not broken, but five fractured lung, or Five lungs, five, five lungs have been five lungs. He's down to four lungs left, <laughs> but um, he also has a collapsed lung. So no laughing matter there. No, he's no, legitimately no, no, no. hurt. Uh, they don't have a timetable for his return yet, but he'll miss several weeks uh, with this. And now there's the Jameis Winston show. Oh, well, wait, wait. We don't know who the starting <laughs> quarterback is, Sean Payton. <laughs> Do -do -do. Um, but it's James Winston. You so, will see plenty of, uh, you know, of of a tight end playing quarterback. May, maybe, maybe, because I, I was reminded yesterday. I mean, when when Breeze went out last year and Bridgewater came in, you saw almost no Taysom Hill. 
because he's the backup quarterback at that point. And so they basically didn't even use him. So there are a couple different thoughts. Now, Peyton not declaring Winston the starter is something to pay attention to. We'll know on Friday. And it could be Taysom Hill. I mean, Jameis Winston came in, took a few sacks, threw an interception, didn't look great. It's probably Winston. I think we all expect that to be the case. I'm just saying it's a tough call. Like, I would still be picking up Taysom Hill on the, under the chance that he's the guy or has opportunities. But, I, you know, last year they didn't use him. Yeah, I was listening to Mike Triplett this morning. He's one of the best beat writers for the New Orleans Saints area. He was saying it's, it, it, it is, it's just Jameis. This is Jameis' audition for the future of – you know, being maybe the quarterback for uh, the Saints. But, yeah, I mean, uh, if it came out and Taysom Hill was the starter on Sunday, I, I guess I would be very surprised but not shocked. Yeah, this if you have Jameis on your dynasty squad, this it, you got to take the silver lining here. If Jameis gets a chance to earn a starting job and, and maybe even the Saints job, but, but to Andy's point that uh, you made yesterday – uh, kind of in passing, Taysom Hill, at least on ESPN, I don't know where else, but on the ESPN platform, Taysom Hill has tight end eligibility. Now, Matthew Barry, a uh, friend of the show, put a tweet out saying that ESPN is going to add quarterback eligibility to Taysom Hill because they don't know who the starter is going to be. It's already been added. It, yeah, it, so it's been added. But the, the point is, <clears throat> Taysom Hill should probably be picked up for, regardless in the off chance that he is the starting quarterback and you can play him at tight end this week because they won't take his eligibility away at the tight end position this is this is playing fantasy football I, it feels kind of dirty but this is playing within the rules of the game that you are given yeah yeah that's why he's kind of uh wide range of outcomes but if he was the starting quarterback and the fact that he runs the football he can Tim Tebow his way to uh, fantasy performance, yeah, potentially. And, if, and in a tight end slot. I mean, we've said for years, Goodness. for years and years, if you can play a quarterback in a tight end slot, you always do it. <laughs> yeah, it's one that's, of your big... It's one of our sayings we're famous for. We wrote for. our book, and that was that's one of the right. big points. One of the major points. You can find that on Amazon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's literally cheating, but legal. Right. It's right Which up, is right up your right alley. Right up my alley, <laughs> man. It sounds perfect. <laughs> Legal Cheating w. by Jason Moore. That's another book he's coming out with. Yeah, I'm uh, working on that as we speak. All right, Drew Locke, rib injury. Un, uh, his status against the Dolphins, uncertain. Dolphins are a tough matchup. Drew Locke has been a uh, – other than a couple quarters, yeah. been, been pretty disastrous. Apparently, he can only play against Prevent D, D and yeah. he's pretty good at that. Uh, Tyler Lockett, bit of a knee sprain heading into Week 11 against the Cardinals. I like that that's the quote. He has a bit of a knee sprain. What what does that even mean? That says he's super optimistic, Mike, so he couldn't. That's the worst it gets. Yeah, it, it is a short week, so it's worth monitoring. If they had practice, he would not have practiced. Yeah, Thursday night game. Uh, Thursday night game, so you, you got you to gotta pay attention and at least uh, be ready to pivot. I mean, look, David Moore would be a, a an actual streaming option at the wide receiver position. He's involved from mm -hmm. time to time anyways. Patrick Peterson will be on DK Metcalf again, and if Tyler Lockett is unable to go for whatever reason, the Cardinals, I believe, are the third worst team in terms of fantasy points given up to the wide receiver position over the last five weeks. So you are looking at opportunities. You know Wilson's going to get his, and Kyler's going to score. So I, you know, you could do worse. I, I know Swain will be an option as well. Swain would be who I would look at just because he projects more. I think they'll keep David Moore in the role he has, but. Uh, yeah, hopefully you have Tyler Lockett, and it's not an issue. Okay. Yeah, Carlos Hyde will return for Thursday's game against the Cardinals. Unsure about Chris Carson. So mm -hmm. continue to monitor. We'll have updates before the Thursday night game there. That's a – Pete Carroll thinks Carlos Hyde will return. Just want to make sure. Oh, he thinks. Okay, thank you, Brooks. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then – So Carlos Hyde will not be returning. He has a bit of a Thursday's chance game. to return is what the – no. <laughs> Zach Ertz will uh, – He's designated to return from injured reserve, but he's not been activated. Right. He has 21 days. That's the window where he can uh, practice without coming off the IR, and so he'll be back in the next three weeks. Which I believe, Mike, you have a, what, 21 days to forgiveness plan in place for Zach Ertz. Can you get there? This is, in fact, where I am intentionally dropping him so someone else can pick him up. Oh, okay. So, so 21 days to vindictiveness. <laughs> <laughs> 
Andy Dalton has been activated from the reserve COVID list. Do you guys know anything else about his uh, potential? Is he starting this yeah, week? Yeah, he'll be starting. He's been practicing, and now that he's activated, he's he's good to go. I guess the only takeaway I would have there fantasy-wise was he tended to target uh, Marty Cooper a little bit more than, mm -hmm. than the backups did. Sam Darnold will not play in week 11. He's on a throwing program or some something that I heard from Adam Gaze there. So well, it, it puts Brashad Perryman in play. It really does Joe because Flacco against the Chargers. Yeah, Flacco's throwing the ball down the field. So Jets, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And there was a report. I don't know if we've mentioned it on the show, and it was from a beat reporter in the New York area, but they also talked about LaMichael P. Ryan and the fact the team, much like, you know, uh, DeAndre Swift with, with Detroit, he's supposed to be the featured back. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean a lot in New York, but P. Ryan is involved in the passing game a little bit. There have been the occasional start this year where he's been relevant. So if LaMichael P. Ryan, if you need somebody and you're desperate, he may be the, the premier back for the Jets this week. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I wanted to get the reaction. And then Jordan Howard has been released by the Miami Dolphins. And this was probably a case of, look, if you're not going to use them now, you probably never will. So just let them go. Yes. And yes. Uh, good night, sweet prince, Jordan Howard. <laughs> good, good night, sweet prince. All right. I do want to talk about uh, our waiver picks of the week. Before we do that, let's thank our sponsors, Jason. Shall we do that? We shall. Uh, this episode of the Fantasy Football is brought to you by Head & Shoulders, available at Walmart. Uh, this year, we've been doing the new segment every Thursday, picking our up to 100 players. And this past week, uh, you know, one of the reasons we didn't let him come into the office today, mm -hmm. Mike ended up on top. <laughs> John Brown, he hit this week and would have had a much bigger game if not for the injury. Yeah, yeah imagining what he did in such a short period of time, he, he certainly would have taken it up to 100. I was, I was happy with what I saw from Jalen Rager. He was on the field 88% of the time. Had a, uh, He was involved, but uh, Carson Wentz had, oh, man, such a bad game. Uh, certainly did not take it all the way to 100. He was like 88. Eh, 80. Sure. Uh, it's Alan, still a B. Allen Robinson, which is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Allen Robinson, not quite to 100. Well, 106 passing yards, not going to get it done. <clears throat> but he had 43 of them. So, uh, 106 passing yards, man. Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> That's preposterous. Well, they added another 41 on the ground Ugh. as a team. <laughs> yeah, let's not linger on the Bears. But you can take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today, and then check out this Thursday. We've got our up to 100 picks again this week. And we want to thank HelloFresh, longtime sponsor, longtime Hello. supporter of my belly and my uh, afternoon plan. Look, I love the variety that I get from HelloFresh. When I am making my meals without HelloFresh, I've got like four staples that I just keep rotating nonstop, and I get sick of eating them. But with HelloFresh, you get convenient delivery right to your door with new recipes all the time, super easy to make. You can save 40% by using HelloFresh versus shopping, and it's easier, and there's no waste, and it's easy to clean up. They bring everything in this bag. HelloFresh is just a, a, an awesome time that can get you you know, 20-minute meals that are all different, they are, uh, you know, uh, we've used. We them. had them three times last week. Yeah, and one of them had this mushroom sauce on this this finely made chicken. Oh, so good! I mean, l literally, they they have been a a lifesaver over the last year. And you can get HelloFresh right now. And if you go to HelloFresh.com slash fantasy ninety and use code fantasy ninety to get ninety dollars off, including free shipping, you will not regret it. It's the the best meal delivery service that you can imagine. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy90 and code Fantasy90 to get $90 off, including free shipping at HelloFresh.com. All right, waiver time. Put me in, coach. All right, it's waiver time. Mike, how are your ears after that drop? Are you still with us? I was prepared for that one, so okay. I turned it down. All right. All we'll right. try to kick you in the face later with yeah. some breaking news. I will. I'll make you a promise, Mike. I will hit a random drop at some point in the waiver segment. Oh, man. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, all right. Returning from the bye, Falcons, <laughs> Cowboys, Chiefs, Jets. Heading to the bye, Bills, Bears, Giants, 49ers. <sighs> Are you feeling That's like... That's my uh, Diggs-Josh Allen stack going to bye. Uh, it was, uh, Are you going to miss him? 
yes, I am going to miss them desperately, and uh, hopefully there's some good waiver wire pickups. I, I feel like I do not like the waiver wire pickups at wide receiver for the most part. There, there's, a, there's a couple uh, options out there, but I think that uh, interesting. it's a weak week in my opinion. A weak week? Yes. Yeah, I mean, Those so we were spelled different. Couple couple <laughs> stacks. I mean, last week we lost Mahomes and we and the Chiefs and then this week the Bills, uh, productive fantasy offense heading to the bye. So let's talk a little bit about the uh kind of probably rostered worth checking on wide receivers to start this segment out. Uh that that would be Debo Samuel um mm -hmm. coming off of the bye. Are you really? No, he's heading into the bye. Yeah, he's oh, heading, sorry, into the heading into the bye. I'm sorry, heading into the bye. I know Mike Mike and I have talked about this this, this last week while you weren't here. I, we just disagree. I, I, I don't want Debo. Debo is not that appealing to me in the sense that, so he's, you know, he was injured and then he's going to bye. Then he comes back against uh, the Rams and he's been injured. Is, is this someone that should be taking up a roster spot? Yeah, I mean, I, I understand why. I mean, he's not an imminent help to your team, but it, it's the same case. I, I look at him the way we've looked at Ayuk the past couple of weeks. You kind of grab him and you start him, and you know that Kyle Shanahan builds the offense around him. So when Debo's back, I think he'll build the offense around Debo. Uh, I'm not extremely excited about it. I mean, you have a problem at the quarterback position. Like you said, a couple bad matchups coming out. So, yeah, I mean, not, not juiced. And then Marvin Jones... Probably rostered, but he is actually the wide receiver seven over the last month. It yeah, took him a while to get kicking going. It off. Yeah. Yep. So, but no Kenny Galladay lately, and uh, that means Marvin Jones. You know, I'm starting him in a dynasty league this week. I have confidence. It's a great matchup for Stafford this upcoming week. So if Marvin was out there, he's a plug and play, instant yes. start type of guy. He would be a great pickup. Now Hollywood Brown is still the number one drop question for everybody i mean you, you've you got to let go yeah you have to drop them i mean we we said uh even last week that you you can move on but now you you i feel like you have to yeah it's too bad all right main waiver wire pickups for the week i want to hear what level of excitement you guys have for these players because we've talked about a lot of them um and it's it i kind of get what you're saying jason there's a number of players that seem like they are interesting yet not exciting and there are a number of players that you kind of have to make a judgment call on and whether or not it will continue. You know, MBS, MVS has had some some good weeks, but Alan Lazard could be back, could be a pickup in his, in his own right. The, and that that's the problem that I have with both of these players is that MVS has, has finally looked good. Alan Lazard would have been a pickup, but now you've got MVS and Lazard. You're not sure who who you would really play and – both guys have a bad matchup for two weeks. You've got Indianapolis and Chicago back-to-back -back weeks. So are you really picking those guys up and starting them with confidence? I'm not. No, neither am I. And I, I know that you might hit on one of them. But MVS, I mean, he hangs out with Sammy Watkins. There's no question about it. These two guys, you can't put them in your lineup. When you want to put them in your lineup, you are disappointed. And then Lazard, I know he had a nice coming out party of sorts at the beginning of the year, but you you have a variable of coming off the injury right now. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have any confidence in Lazard coming out of this injury. I don't I don't think that I turned to either of these players this week on the waiver wire, but I want to let Mike weigh in because I think he might have a different opinion. Uh, I am not picking up MVS to play. I am picking up Lazard if... I it, to bolster a roster it, like Lazard or think, Debo. Uh, Lazard. Uh, it, as, assuming that Lazard is going to play this week, I'm with Jason. I don't. I the matchups they stink for the next couple of weeks, but there is still plenty of fantasy football weeks left, including a three week playoffs where he gets to play Detroit, Carolina, and the Tennessee Titans. That's three plus matchups for Alan Lazard. If you pick him up right now, and you see that he gets back to that he is the number two in in the in the depth chart, then you could have a a really good play for the fantasy playoffs. He isn't the he isn't the quick fix fix patch player though, like a couple other other of these wide receivers we're going to talk about. I'm more interested in a couple other names. Jacoby Myers is near the top of the list because you saw uh, Nikhil Harry come back and then not be involved in the offense whatsoever. Myers. Seven more targets in this game. It's a run-first offense, but the matchups over the next few weeks are nice. Houston, Arizona. And I'm, I'm kind of interested in Myers. If, if 
Cam is kind of locking in on a single target. You don't have Edelman. You don't have Harry uh, with the connection. What's your interest level on Jacoby Myers as a spot star? He is probably my number one pickup, and I'm not thrilled about it, but he has been good for three weeks in a row. He's got two-plus matchups coming back, and like you said, it was nice to see that Harry did not really affect it. It, it, it. You know, he wouldn't have had a great game if he didn't throw a touchdown, but he did. He's involved. And Jacoby Myers, to me, is a, a player that is widely available with a good matchup where you can grab him, plug him, play him. Um, the other name seen that forty percent of the targets three straight weeks in a row. I mean, yeah. that, that's absurd. Yeah, I mean, it, a thirty percent market of the of targets is great. It, that's like that's it's elite. It's elite. So forty percent is absurd. However, we do know that from the Bears, the percentage is not everything. Uh, <laughs> I believe it, it, Allen Robinson had about fifty percent of the yards. But uh, it didn't matter. Now, I want to throw two names out with that, though. Jacoby Myers and then Josh Reynolds and Michael Pittman. Michael Pittman yep. has impressed me. He is Pittman's my favorite grab of the week. I think I think he's at the top of my list, too. 6'4", 220, heavily involved, end arounds, screen passes, went 7 for 101. I you know T.Y. Hilton is washed in terms of fantasy value. He's a single-digit player each and every week. The name is the only thing. He's on so many waiver wires. Where when I go and I'm like, let me put in my waiver claims for the week. Like I, I legitimately, I think last mm -hmm. week, I think I signed him and released him the next day because I fell for it. I was like, oh, that'd be a nice name on my bench. But then I looked at it and I was like, gross. I'm letting you go the next day as a punishment. <laughs> Pittman's a catch and release. Yeah, it's a catch and release. This one's too small. <laughs> Throw yeah. it back. And Pittman is somebody that is, you know, you need the – it's like Jefferson, right? It's like Rager. You need the upside of a player. Like, we don't know the ceiling of Pittman. And you need the explosiveness of a player like Pittman, where you have the ability to turn one play into, you know, a big play to win your week. So Pittman is somebody that, you know, when you talk about bolstering your lineup, I like the mysterious upside. Yeah, Pitt Pittman is up there at, at the top of the list. And m the reason that I wasn't very gung-ho about him is because he does have a difficult matchup against the Green Bay Packers. And we're looking at, oh, we need to we need guys we could pick up, play right now, and get a win. But if Jair Alexander is not past the concussion protocol, he missed this last week, then they're not as worrisome a matchup as uh, – as it appears at first glance. So if he were to be out, I think Pittman would be a, a really, really good play this week. But and on top the, of that, Tennessee, Houston, Las Vegas, Houston. Those are the next four matchups for Michael Pittman, who, in my opinion, he's about to break out and, and emerge as the number one wide receiver for the Colts. Yeah, I agree. And I, I if you have to trust an offense more, between the Colts and the Patriots, you're taking the Colts option, even though he doesn't have a 40% target market share. It's a much bigger pie. So right now I would probably go, uh, if I needed to play a player this week, I still think Myers is a better play than Pittman. But uh, in more of a holistic view, I'd go Pittman-Myers, and then I'd probably... I probably slot Rager in there at this point, just with yes. the with the upside and integration of the offense. Both those players, Michael Pittman for the Colts, Jalen Rager for the Eagles, have upside, have the ability to become a kind of center piece of their offense over time. It's hard. Are with you the picking up uh, Jacoby Myers? Let's say you're locked and loaded. You just need that one flex play at the wide receiver position this week because you're in PPR. Do you want Jacoby Myers, or do you want the upside of Brashad Perryman, who we mentioned? Who, uh, for the Jets, he will have Joe Flacco. He's taking on the Chargers. It's very close. I guess I would take, uh, if my team was pretty steady, I think the upside is higher for Perryman. If I need a floor, the floor is higher for Myers. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, the the name I, th I think Andy brought up, but we haven't really uh, talked about him. Josh Reynolds needs to be someone that is looked at. Since week yes. four, who do you think has more targets, Robert Woods or Josh Reynolds? Since week four? Wow. Yes, it's Josh wow. Reynolds. He's been really involved in the offense. He's playing north of 80% of snaps. His target share is great. Four games ago, he was the wide receiver 26. That's great. Three weeks ago, he was the wide receiver 26 again. This last week, he was the wide receiver 20. This is a guy on waivers that you can pick up. He's getting targets. It's, not, he, it's hard because he's not the one on his team. He's not the two on his team. 
he's getting targets like a one, but it's I get it. Josh Reynolds isn't someone that I am gung-ho about that I really want to start, but he is someone that's on your waivers that you can pick up and you can put out there who's getting targets on an offense that can score points, and his percentage of 15-plus yard, air yard targets is really high, so he also has the chance of breaking a big play for a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, when you look at this offense, you know, that Robert Woods' game is not downfield generally, and, and Cooper Cup, they take a shot or two across the, you know, like a seam route, but he's close to the line of scrimmage very oftentimes as well. You lost Brandon Cooks, and yeah. this could be the deep threat that you need on your offense. I think you're going to see what you've seen from the Rams every year, which is kind of a transitioning uh, change in the offense towards the back half of the year. I, I would not be surprised if the tight ends got more involved due to the lack of production from Woods and, and, and Cup as well. So uh, interesting names at wide receiver. You know, we laid it out there. You guys can make your call based on your team dynamic. Let's talk some running and backs. And don't forget Sammy Watkins. Is no, please there. forget Sammy Watkins is I'm out just, there. We're bringing up <laughs> Rashad Perryman. What do you mean don't? We're bringing up – we're going deep. Sammy Watkins <laughs> should be back from injury this week. Uh, I don't know that McCall Hardman will be available, and he's had big games. I'm just I'm saying. I know. You're you, under contractual obligation to the lizard people <laughs> yes. to mention it. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, well, at least we get to hit this drop again. Go. Yeah, it's better when Sammy's involved. Yeah. Okay. Running backs. Let's talk about drop candidates first before we turn to some pickups for the week. J.K. Dobbins is a player that you feel like you must roster. And yet, the pathway for J.K. Dobbins, look, we've already seen Ingram out, right? And it still hasn't been smooth sailing for J.K. Dobbins. This offense has struggled at times. You lose rushing production due to Lamar Jackson I think Dobbins is not a must hold anymore I agree I, I think Dobbins is someone I would probably move on from because while he is an insurance option you you can't play him while Mark Ingram is healthy right that you can't do it correct um and so he's an insurance option Mark Ingram goes down and now he becomes a startable usable asset but compare him to those other guys like uh Tony Pollard where if the starter goes down he's just the guy right now if the starter goes down he's now in a better timeshare do, do you apply that same philosophy to all three running backs for baltimore would you let them all go like I, if yeah. you had gus would you let him go if you had ingram would you let him go yeah if i need a roster spot this week and i've got any one of these three running backs i am fine moving on it's incredible to release all the running backs from the team that i think is number two in rushing in football yeah but when the i would be holding on to gus personally uh, he's just he's he looked the best last week. He has been getting goal line carries when they get there. So uh, he's not it, maybe you have a better option, you know, like Naheem Hines, we're going to talk about him. I probably would prefer him, but Gus is not a, a you have to drop him to me. Melvin Gordon, Philip Lindsay also been asked about. I think you can let Lindsay go. I would not let the guaranteed carries of Melvin Gordon go. Agree. Yeah, I'd just be kind of holding my nose and putting him on the roster starting him if I needed him. Love Bell. I think we all agree you can move on. You can drop him. But the number two uh, question, so when we put the thread up and people are submitting their drop candidates, number one was was Marquise Hollywood Brown. Number two was Jonathan Taylor, uh, running back for the Colts. Always a threat to score from the one. Let me be very clear. He's a threat to score from the <laughs> one yard line. Not the two, not the three, oh. the one. So I, the way that I look at this, and I know we've had plenty of heated debate over this backfield. Um, this is a player where, since the bye, extreme disappointment. Not really involved, hasn't looked good. But if you're only taking that three-game sample and throwing out the six weeks prior, where he was the running back 15 and very involved, I, I think that would be a mistake to just cut him and move on. If he was on the waiver wire, I would certainly be picking him up and rostering him because the schedule is is beautiful. He's still a rookie that is, you know, things can change for him. This is his rookie season. So I'm not cutting Jonathan Taylor. I don't mind keeping him on your roster. I think that makes sense just in case something happens. That being said, we just talked about J.K. Dobbins. And J.K. Dobbins has looked a whole lot better as a runner than Jonathan Taylor. So just keep that context in mind. This is a team that's willing to turn turn it over to Hines on any given week. Turn it over to Wilkins on any given week. Um, we've seen that happen. 
So Taylor is somebody that I think you you probably can stash and hope you either, I mean. Just gets back to what we saw the first six weeks where he's the primary. I think that was still a disappointment for people. Absolutely. But, it, you know, we're talking about J.D. McKissick here. We're talking about other waiver wire pickups where they're RB2s. They're just solid RB2s that you can plug in. If he gets back to that and you don't have the expectations of having a top five back, yeah. but the running back 15 to 24, great. You anything to add there, Mike? No, I agree. I JD keep him. JD McKissick is uh, near the top of the the list. Now he he might be rostered in your league. He probably is, but uh, you know he's just getting targeted. Fifteen targets last week. <laughs> yeah, fourteen and fifteen targets. If that was a wide receiver, that's incredible. It's a running Absurd. back. So yeah, he he needs to be. Uh, if he's available, grab him. I mean, you, you pretty much should look at him like a slot wide receiver. He's Absolutely. not really a running back. Alex Smith has one wide receiver of, of note, Terry McLaurin, to target. And, and then he has a slot wide receiver named J.D. McKissick. Naeem Hines? Naeem Hines is tough because we've been here before. Yes. We've, been, we've been here before, and look, he was the better best runner on the, uh, on the team last week. He's the birthday boy. He was the best pass catcher. And, I you know, he's had some pretty – Nice games this season. The team trusts him t more than he they do the other two backs. So, you know, Green Bay, Tennessee, Houston, I think Hines has to be rostered, but I'm not spending the kind of fab that people were spending in week one thinking this was a an every week thing. No, I, I agree completely. I, I don't think he's going to dominate every week like we saw or hoped in the beginning of the year. But if you really look at the targets – they're not J.D. McKissick level of absurd, but he's getting five or six targets in most of his recent games. That's enough of a baseline to give you the opportunity to get those touchdown games, to get those upside games, or, or where he just looks. This is The thing about the Colts is they say, oh, we're going with the hot hand. You hear that so often that you just forget about it, but genuinely, this is a team that's going with the hot hand. When Jordan, it's 100% true. When Jordan Wilkins came out, and just looked like, oh, man, he's got it today, then they're like, we're going with him. When Naheem Hines, if you watch his last game, from the get-go, he was like, wow, he has got the juice today, and then they just ran with him. So that's the danger, but it because of his target upside or his target reliability, if he has the hot hand, you're going to have a baseline and then an upside. Yeah, I think the only – you know, when you play Jonathan Taylor, he could score a touchdown. When you play Naeem Hines, he can catch some passes. If you play Jordan Wilkins, you're not really Someone getting get either one Jonathan of them. Jonathan Taylor some heated mittens. Get this man a hot <laughs> hand. That's, he's not doing it himself, no. I'll tell you. All right, my favorite two pickups at the running back position are these next two names, though. Uh, by far, uh, Damian Harris and Kalen Balazs have the best one-week matchup situations that you could ask for. Uh, Balazs has been very relevant for two consecutive weeks. Six targets last week, another 18 carries. Clearly has surpassed Joshua Kelly in trustworthiness out of that backfield and has the Jets this week. So Balazs, two straight good weeks. And then Damian Harris has Houston this week. The identity of this offense right now is the running game. And Damian Harris is the running game. 22 carries against Baltimore, ends up with 121 yards. He had uh, a, a delightful 55% 55 of snaps. Told you, Mike. Told you I'd get you. That one got me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, highest that of, one got me. Highest that of the one got season. Me good. So I like Harris a little bit more than Balash. I think both are great one-week pickups. And uh, look, Balash, if he holds on to that role, like if Eckler doesn't come back, we already know Justin Jackson's gone. He gets Buffalo next week. Buffalo can't stop the run either. So... It was nice to see Tremaine Pope back in the lineup and only used really on special teams. It said that Kalen Balazs was the player they, they want to go with right now. And, and, and again, Joshua Kelly just has his role. These are the Joshua Kelly downs where we just want to give someone a breather, get two yards, give it to Joshua Kelly. He's your guy. Um, but I, I agree. I think Kalen Balazs is a better pickup over the – Upcoming, if you need someone for the upcoming three weeks, I would go with Balaj. If you just need someone for this week, Damian Harris against Houston. Look, he didn't get the touchdowns. It was it was sexy Rexy Rex Burkhead had two touchdowns last week, but Damian Harris was the offense. Twenty two carries, one 
120 plus yards. If he gets in the end zone, he's a monster. That's a monster fantasy. If league. if I'm in a full PPR, I'd rather have Balazs this week. If I'm in a standard league, I'd rather have Harris, and probably a half point, I'd rather have Harris. Mike, where do you weigh in? Uh, I agree that if you're getting that PPR bump, you got to go with Balazs. I mean, the the problem with Harris is he's not he's not going to score a touchdown. The, the when they get into the red zone, when they get in close, they go to Rex Burkhead because that's just who that's the guy they like there. I yeah I I agree with you that well not only do they have Rex Burkhead inside the five, but they've also got Cam Newton who very right. often can can vulture. That's but a good point. I do think Damian Harris can you know he can score from inside the ten where it, they're giving him so many carries that if he just breaks off, you know, a, a 15, 20 yarder for a touchdown, I, we should see that eventually. All right. Uh, man, the weight off your shoulders when you lose Adam Gaze, it must just, he was running with a weight on his shoulders when he was with Miami and, and New York. And now he ends up. Wait, in, is that the problem? Does Adam Gaze make his players wear like a weight vest? It's just the emotional weight, Mike. It's the emotional mm. weight of being near and around that stink. Are you sure? They don't have like a five pound vest on. I don't know. He's he, honestly, so, he, he's the kind of guy that would do that. He's a, <laughs> let's work out. Let's let's just get you. Uh, he soaks all their pads before the game. Makes them real heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Put these on. All right. Uh, LaMichael P. Ryan, I mentioned it. He may be featured. He is a spot start type of player. Yeah. Um, the Wayne, matchup is good. I mean, Wayne Goleman is going to the bye, but he has been ignored and he has been productive. In two consecutive weeks, and then let's talk about Salvin uh, Ahmed yes. of the Miami Dolphins. They let go of Jordan Howard. Now, the tough part with Ahmed is you could have Breida back at some point soon. But you know, twenty-one carries. It's basically a plug-and-play situation, like Miles Gaskin. They just put Ahmed in, and it was it was the same. Yeah, because Miles Gaskin isn't that good. <laughs> so they're like, okay, you, you're you're fine. You're a running back. It, it is nice to are see Are you that. similarly sized? <laughs> yes, you are. Okay. It is nice to see that I think this team wants to have a feature back. They don't have a feature back, but they would like to have someone out there who can catch the ball, run the ball, just projecting for next year when they've got so much draft capital this is a team that I could see drafting a really good running back because of all the capital and then I will have more trust for them next year saying they they're willing to roll with one player in, you know in in all facets Mike do you want to add anything to our running back room here I mean are you actually excited for P Ryan moving forward do you take a shot at one of the two non Daryl Henderson backs in Los Angeles. I mean, Brown ended up in the end zone this past week, but we've been there before. Cam Akers yeah, I'm not, was mess. I'm not spinning that wheel of Los Angeles. They they will go with all three. Uh, I have a, a decent amount of excitement for the Michael P. Ryan. I, as, as has been documented on this show, I was backed into starting him. And so I've, uh, a couple weeks ago, I've watched him, but he has some juice and he can catch the ball. So, if they actually do feature him where he's seeing 60% of the snaps or so, he should volume his way into being a, a startable running back too. So I, I I think P. Ryan is is a must-add this week. I don't know that he's a must-play. If, if you're going for the one week, you're going for Damian Harris or Kayla Balazs. But if you're if you're looking at a low a low budget add, a low waiver priority add, P. Ryan would look good on your bench right now. And then if you're kind of set up and you're looking to add some of the insurance options, somebody that could end up being the sneaky league winning in the event of an injury type of player, you know, somebody like Jamal Williams, yeah. if he's out there on your waiver wire, you know, Jamal, he was involved with Aaron Jones. So yeah, he was Jamal Williams should be added. I think Devonte Booker is a yes. player that, you know, has emerged 18 carries last week on a week where Josh or uh, Josh Jacobs was very productive if Jacobs and Jalen Richard got hurt. Booker is so Booker was the worst third string back for Denver. And over the course of this year, there have been so many times where we're watching this, you know, nine TV setup, and I'm like, oh my gosh, who was that? And I always laugh because it's Booker, and I feel like he stinks, but he's looked really good this season. And Josh Jacobs just has a tendency to get banged up. If if Jacobs even you know, not a catastrophic injury, but he went out with a concussion, he went out with a, a one game injury. Booker's like a must start at that point with, like Mike said, Jalen Richard went out. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Boston Scott, I mean, is he a, uh, somebody that you got to put on your roster? <sighs> I mean, it, he's he's as fine as anyone else as, a, as an insurance option. In despite, the Brian Hill category, Yeah, Madison. exactly. Despite his 56-yard rushing touchdown, which was very nice, um, he, he, he's not – I mean, this is Miles Sanders, the Miles Sanders show. Yeah. Wait, if you, didn't if you, you mean the Corey Lev Clement Bell? around the goal line show? They did bring oh, him in for gracious. like one play. Mike, how did that sit with you? Not very well. That was uh that, that I felt like I got uh Dalvin cooked at that moment. Yeah. The old the old the beat of the bees. And it, it, like if you got Levy on Bell and you're in a super deep league and you're looking at the waiver wire saying there's no one I can drop Lev Bell for, at this point I'd rather have Daryl Williams for the Kansas City Chiefs than Levy on Bell. Okay. Let's talk about some tight ends. It's oh, tough. No. I mean, it's I've, tough. I've got a tight end that I that I would definitely be picking up. Taysom Hill. No. Nope. Well, sure. Yes. yes. I mean, in general, yes. If if you can play Taysom him Hill at tight should, end, should be the number one ad here, right? I would agree with that. If if assuming that he is eligible on your platform for tight end, then you have to pick him up. Because um, the upside's so much higher than some of these other guys. Yeah, I agree. the The guy that I'm looking for and and he might even be rostered but he'll probably be dropped this week is hold on for it it's jordan reed jordan reed is going All into right. the bye you're not playing him this week okay but he's got a bye week the only issue with jordan reed is health he got more on the field this last week and was was actually good i mean five for 62 in limited work now he's got the bye and he's coming back kittle has a Serious injury he's dealing with. Are you targeting uh, Jordan Reed in our, our uh, league of record here, Mr. Moore? I might be. I mean, right, it's tough because I've got Noah Fant and Jared Cook, and I can't imagine moving you know, those guys for Jordan Reed. But everybody out there, literally everyone but one in your league is dealing with tight end troubles, and Jordan Reed could be a solution for a block of time while he's able to stay on the field. It's, it's not a bad point. I mean, I'm not extremely – thrilled with the options out there. I mean, Mike Gesicki, no, I'm not really interested. Yes, he had five targets. Trusting Tua, you can't do it with Parker. You can't really do it with Gesicki. Goddard, been disappointing. You, The opportunity's there. He'll have targets. And he's probably rostered still. Yeah, and he's probably, yeah, exactly. He's probably on a roster. If he's not, I would add him. Ebron, okay. You have three wide receivers that were in the top 10 this past week. You're still down the totem pole there. And then Logan Thomas, you know, six targets from Alex Smith. He is a player you can add this week. He, you yes. can play Logan Thomas against Cincinnati if you don't have a better I'm into option. It. I'm yeah. into it. I agree with Jason that if you have a player right now that you're okay uh, okay starting, go grab Jordan Reed, get ready for the, the remainder of the schedule, see if Reed turns into that player. But Logan Thomas is – he is interesting. Over the last four we- four games, I should say – Tight end seven this past week against Detroit. Uh, he he did have a, a bomb in week nine against the Giants, but tight end four, tight end nine before that. Like, at, And this is a different team. Alex Smith is a good quarterback once he has his full mojo confidence back, and it looked like Alex Smith was starting to get that towards the second half of that game against the Lions. So I think that Logan Thomas is a... He is in play here. Yeah, if you need a start this week, Logan Thomas is the pickup. All right, let's and talk. He gets the Bengals. Let's talk about some great defensive options, and there's quite a few that could be out there, at least in the lower rostered category. Look, the Dolphins play Denver. That's a smash play. Yes, but the yeah. Vikings play Dallas, and that's a, the way the Vikings have been playing on defense lately. Andy Dalton is going to be on his back, and the Chargers play the Jets. So all three of those are really good options. Yeah, I, I agree. If I can take my pick from all three of them, it's definitely the Dolphins. I've been bringing them up for weeks. The schedule going forward is great, and their special teams and defense is just playing out of this world right now. Full stream ahead. I, I gave you a moment there, Mike to uh, mm-hmm. adjust your volume. All I right. I appreciate it. Streaming quarterback options. Who do you have for the upcoming week? I'm going to I'm going to jump in first just so that I can actually show my support for Mike's. I support your pick, Mike. I think it's Thank the you. right waiver pickup because of potential upside past this week. But my 
current streamer this week is Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins has, has actually been fine. You, you might think, oh, Dalvin Cook has been uh, running the show for the Vikings. They don't want to throw the ball very much. That's true. And it is true. And at the same time, <laughs> Kirk Cousins has you been. You might I think, think something correct. Just happening. Uh, but at the same time, Kirk Cousins has has been fine. He's been, you know, th he was a quarterback one this past week in a tough matchup. He's always got Adam Thielen. Andy, you love Justin Jefferson. You were shopping for shirts for Justin Jefferson today, and he gets that Dallas defense that stinks. So I am fine rolling with Kirk Cousins. Those are uh, Justin Jefferson shirts. Ooh. All right. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Look, I've got Big Benjamin, all right? I'm taking Big Ben against Jacksonville. Go watch the tape from last week. No huddle offense. Big Ben calling the plays. That has a lot to do with why James Conner isn't getting the rock that much because guess what? When Big Ben calls the plays, I'm Big passing. Ben throws the football. Three top ten wide receivers last week. Big play capabilities with Deontay and with Claypool. Touchdowns with Juju. Ebron's available to him. And Jacksonville, oh my. If Big Ben is available in your league, he would be the pickup for sure over over all of these guys. He's he's going to be lightning this week. And then, yeah, Mike, I agree. You, you've got your streaming candidate. I, I do want to talk about him after you reveal. Okay. Uh, it, this is actually – it's a great week for streamers. The, these the, This is not the one that I'm going to highlight, but Matt Stafford against Carolina. That's a great matchup. Alex Smith against Cincinnati. Cam Newton might have been dropped. Uh, they, someone in your league may have given up on the captain of booty scooting, and he gets to play Houston. But I want to highlight – Jameis Winston. Drew Brees is going to miss a lot of time. Five fractured ribs, a collapsed lung. The Atlanta Falcons have been playing better uh, s since the, they made the coaching change. But Jameis is now the captain of the New Orleans offense. And that offense involves Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, who is a top three wide receiver in, in the NFL. And Jared Cook is a great option for someone who likes throwing touchdowns, or historically likes throwing touchdowns to the tight end position. So I I like Jameis, and I th he's got a couple good matchups coming here moving forward, and Jameis is certainly available on your waiver wire unless you're in a two-quarterback league. Maybe he's been picked up. And look, I, I know that there's going to be a wide range of opinions on Jameis Winston, so I totally respect the pick. I understand why you're making it. I am just wanting to weigh in that I am on the opposite view of Jameis Winston. Look, death taxes and Jameis Winston interceptions. Those are the most oh, yeah. guaranteed oh, things yeah. in life. Unless you're Sean Payton. And Sean Payton with Jameis Winston, if he's the selection at quarterback, they're going to protect Jameis from himself. I don't believe in the upside of Jameis Winston in the Saints offense. I believe in Alvin Kamara, but I don't think that you're going to get what you hope you what you used to get in Tampa Bay with them. Defense first, running first, protect the football. Uh, just weighing in with my opinion there. It's, a, it's an opinion thing. So uh, I understand the history for Jameis, but I'm not as enthusiastic as uh, – I, I don't know where you weigh in, Jay, but I'm, I'm not as enthusiastic as Mike. I view Jameis as an extreme high-risk, high-reward player. This is a guy who could go yeah, out fair. there and absolutely if, – if you're – you know, you're taking a shot that Jameis – you know, look, he led the league in passing yards last year. He threw a lot of touchdowns. He – Threw a lot of picks. He was good for fantasy. He he had great games. He had terrible games. The thing is, is if he comes out and is good with this offense, with a great offensive head coach, he's just got a schedule that, you know, Atlanta, Denver, Atlanta, Philly, you, you've you got a really good option on the waivers for a month. But you need to be aware that you're taking a big risk because Jameis could come out here and, I mean, Jameis – never ceases to surprise me with how poor he can play. Um, so, you know, but you, you at least saw Teddy Bridgewater last year come in. He had four starts. He was pretty good. Three top 20. He had a top five uh, if week If James in there. Winston was standing in front of a mirror and he said, show me the complete opposite of myself, yeah. a picture <laughs> of Teddy Bridgewater would come up in the mirror. I mean, those are just two totally different players. I'm worried about the mistakes. I'm worried about the benching. I'm worried about the strategy that, that yeah, Peyton will take. But again, I, I understand we have a history of I'm him not, willing to sling it, but this is not I Tampa Bay. I am not Bay. worried about benching at all. Uh, like Taysom Hill, unless the Saints want to go with the, the offense, is 
completely the Tim Tebow offense where Tim Tebow or uh, uh, Taysom Hill is just going to run. They're going to play. They're going to run the read option. Like Taysom Hill is not a good quarterback. He, and Taysom Hill has already had ball security problems on his own. Jameis is a better quarterback. So I, it's, I, I, I'm, a, I'm with Jason. It is a high-risk, high-reward play, but I'm willing to take that chance. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the podcast. If you go to pristineauction.com, you can browse hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Uh, they've got pop culture auctions up right now. Uh, good example, a signed Keenan Allen photo yesterday, $35. You can use the code BALLERS. You get a $10 credit. You guys have anything else to add before we close out? No, I don't. I think we had uh, an awesome show. All right. That was boisterous. Impressive. Goodbye. All right. That is it for the show. Mike, here comes the, here comes the music. I hope you're all right. And uh, we'll catch you tomorrow. Buy, sell. Mailbag. Something Goodbye. special. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>